what if I cannot go back? Okay. Yeah, okay. Sense. This works. All right. Uh, all right. Thank you, Rahul, for the nice introduction and uh, to all the organizers for inviting me here and to the audience for being here attending uh, to the, the workshop. So, yes, I'm a research scientist at MathWorks, which is the company that makes MATLAB. Uh, you probably know that already, but we have one of those cases where the product is more famous than the company. So it's it's common to specify that for us. So yeah, with the rest of my team, uh, by the way, we are in charge of the research collaboration program. I, I thought it was important to mention here, you guys, um, and uh, we, we manage research collaborations with external researchers like, like yourselves. But anyway, besides that, we also have fun applying our own tools for advanced research. And in the last few years, with the help of, of some uh, very bright students or interns, actually, um, we uh, we worked on some projects related on, on multi-agent systems. So I would love to talk about all of them, but unfortunately, given, of course, the, uh, the limited time, I will focus on one, uh, which I think is the most aligned uh, with the, uh, this uh, this workshop uh, topic. So, and this is gonna be about automated assignment and, and incentivized transfer of traffic privileges in cooperative driving. Uh, and this is just a, a simulator that shows some results, but, I will talk about it in the next few slides. So the research questions that we try to answer with this research, with this work is, how can cars interact in an harmonious manner like humans do? And in, in this particular work, by interaction, we mean uh, trading the right of way in an intersection, right? And harmonious, why harmonious? Because we try to make everyone happy, right? So we introduce that digital currency so one actor can buy the right way of another actor and hopefully everyone is happy, right? And uh, how do we do that, right? So first of all, uh, the first questions that we need to answer is how do connected autonomous vehicles navigate intersection? So uh, this was important for us to understand, right? Uh, how, how it works and that's why we build a, a simulator. Simulator, a scalable simulator will uh, really help us to understand how this could be implemented. And the second question is, how do we unambiguously determine, determine who owns a resource? So if we have to do a negotiation, we need to know whom we have to negotiate with, right? So that's that's why we need to know who is the right way. So when we talk about uh, negotiation uh, as we drive, it might sound unusual, but we do that all the time. Uh, you know, sometimes by waving our hand, yeah, you go first, you know, some guy here, you can see that he's using some messaging for cartoons. Yeah, I eventually acknowledge that it got in. There might be some more intimidating ways. As you can see, I don't know if you can see what he has in his hand. Yeah, hopefully you don't, you don't see that very often. But there might be cases where negotiations do not work at all. Like, you know, in this case, there is a, there's a fight. Yeah, they, they couldn't uh, <laughs> understand which, which one should go first. So yeah, we, we do that all the time. And uh, we are trying to find a way that can be uh, a mechanism that can make that negotiation more rigorous, right? So uh, uh, co connected autonomous vehicles definitely can help with that, right? Because autonomous cars uh, transmit information to all the neighbors, right? Actors, and this information may include a position, uh, velocity, and also the trajectory. So we might know in advance where the other actors are going through the intersection. And that's really uh, important information for us. Okay, so um, I'm gonna talk about the simulator that I, uh, I mentioned earlier. It's a molded-based simulator for connected vehicles. And in this simulator, user would define the intersection topology, the number of cars, the size speed, and entrance and exit locations for each car. You, you can see, I don't see here, the, Pointer, but yeah, you can see here that in this uh, uh, topology, uh, there are the entrance and exit locations for each car. And the simulator will derive the conflict area uh, of the intersection, uh, safe velocity profile, trajectories, and eventually will drive uh, and assign the right of ways for each, for each car of the intersection. Um, so we decided to start working on a uh, uh, simple T-junction intersection because it's the simplest but still rich enough intersection that allows us to understand how you know, the whole mechanism might work. And uh, what we realized here using this intersection in the simulator is that we don't really need one single big conflict area, right? So in that case, if you only had one 
conflict area instead of dividing it in, in three, as uh, in this case. Every time one or two cars will go through the intersection, there will be a conflict, right? But that's not always the case. That's that's not true. So, for example, here you can see by dividing in three in three areas. And by the way, the three areas are conflict zones. Uh, the number of con conflict zones depends on the topology of the intersection. In this case, we have three. Uh, so you can see here the south car wants to go right and the east car wants to go south and then don't conflict even though they enter the intersection right so there is no conflict and if we can do this through autonomous uh, connected vehicles there's no even need to to stop right in that intersection because they don't conflict and we have other cases right so west and east and all of them can even go to the intersection without having any conflict so that's that's why uh eventually we divided the, the conflict zones into, uh, sorry, the, the big intersection into one, into three conflict areas. So in terms of vehicle dynamics, so for each vehicle, we uh, we model them uh, using a simple um, bicycle model. I, I don't think I need to explain that, but of course we did that using MATLAB and the vehicle dynamic block set, which is one of our tools. And eventually each car um, follows a desired trajectories using a, it's a simple PID controller, and we have a velocity profile uh, for the cars entering the intersection. So with a higher speed, and then it will slow down as they approach the intersection, and then we exit the intersection with a higher speed. So that's pretty much what the simulator does. And uh, this is a small video that shows a preliminary uh, version of the of the simulator. And at this moment, we don't still we don't have. Uh, unambiguous right away, uh, or at least we didn't do it yet, but we applied the traditional three-way stop sign rule. So as you can see, all of the cars stop every time, even though it's not necessary sometimes, right? So here there are a couple of examples. So on the bottom left, you can see a scenario where there is no need for even, even for priority assignment, because as I mentioned in the previous slides, they don't conflict, right? Don't have any conflict as they go through the intersection. But sometimes we really need a priority assignment required because otherwise, if they conflict, they might crash. Uh, so why we define our own and we didn't use, you know, what we have already, like a traffic um, uh, signs, because those are not really uh, unambiguous, right? So, for example, how many times happened to you? Uh, happens to me all the time, right? You are on a four-way stop sign, stop intersection. You think you're next, but so does the other driver, and you know there is a risk of uh, of crash. So uh, we came up with our own mechanism for um, deriving the priority, which is of course based on those three conflict zones that I mentioned earlier, the A, B, C, and so we define the priorities based on first of uh, time of arrival. It's simple enough. So who comes first as a higher priority, but also based on a queue. So every time there are cars stopping towards the intersection, they they are there put in a queue. Uh, and then we merge and compact everything in one single uh, table. In, yeah, it might sound complex, but it's, it's actually not. And now I will show how this works uh, in an example. So uh, this is the, the first example, right? So we have the intersection. Uh, with it's important important also to note to notice that we have these two perimeters, the priority assigned perimeters, which inside which uh, we assign the priorities, and then the connection established, which is another perimeter uh, inside which there is a the the uh, the cars start um, you know communicating to each other. Uh, so one thing I didn't mention is that we have uh, different kind of priorities. So minus one priorities. Uh, means that that particular car doesn't go through that particular intersection. So that means we don't care, right? If, for example, here, one car goes through, uh, yeah, let me show you here. So here, right, I, I don't care. So meaning one car goes to, for example, intersection A, it doesn't go to, sorry, coping zone A without stopping, of course, passing through intersection B and C. So in that case, we don't care about the priority on B and C. So we apply minus one. Zero is the default priority, meaning I'm the only one going through this uh, conflict zone. Uh, so I don't need for a specific priority level, so it's zero. And for all the other ones where there is a you know, competition to go through that uh, conflict zone, we, we give a, a priority number from one, two, three, and so on. 
Okay, sorry, let me go back to the example. So here we have car one, which wants to go to the right and will pass through uh, conflict zone C only. Okay, so that's why we have those minus one that I was talking about here for zones A and B, okay? Then we have car two, but car two is, is still outside the connection established perimeter. So we don't know where it's going. Then for car three, uh, we know that uh, car three wants to go south, as you can see from this arrow, and then it will traverse zones A and B. So that's why we have minus one for C, because we don't care in that case. And then uh, similarly for car four, uh, car four wants to go straight and will traverse zone B and C. So that would be a minus one in zone A. Right, I hope, I hope it's clear enough. Uh, okay, so as the cars move, closer to the intersection. So we see that car one and car three enter the priority assigned uh, perimeter. So that's why we start assigning a, um, a uh, sorry, priorities, right? And at the moment, since car one is the only one that wants to traverse zone C among all the cars inside the priority assigned perimeter, we have a default priority zero. Same thing for car three, which wants to go to A, B, and at the moment is the only one that wants to do that. So zero is uncont uncontested. And again, we keep moving, moving towards the intersection. So the priority changes now because we have uh, car four, which is also inside the priority assigned perimeter. And uh, we have, um, it wants to tra traverse zones B and, and C but it has lower priority than car one because the timer of, of arrival of this car is lower than car, uh, car one. Uh, so that's why we have one and two. So now at this point, car four, however, it's, uh, it's going faster than car three. So that's why uh, given the timer of arrival of car four, it has a higher priority than car three. So car three will have a priority two. So we keep going and yeah, car one now exit the intersection. Car four will be uh, conflicted with uh, car three for zone B, but the priority has been already assigned because car, B, uh, car four has been, uh, has going faster. And so has uh, priority one for B and C. And eventually car one and four will uh, traverse the intersection. So they are out of the uh, assigned table, uh, assigned priority tables. And then we only are left with CAR3 and CAR2. And in this case, the priority is it's quite clear. So CAR3 has to go first and CAR2 next. And eventually they will all go through the intersection. I hope it was uh, clear enough, but uh, all that example that I just showed is summarized in this plot. So in this plot, we have distance, versus time and it's it's clear maybe here to see what is the time of, of arrival for each car um and, and this is of course this plot for uh, for each conflict zones and for each car okay so now that we have determined the right of way of all the cars within the intersection we can start uh, implementing this mechanism for negotiation negotiating the transfer of right of way okay so what we need to have uh for the mechanism of the following assumptions. So cars with privilege might transfer it to others if they can safely come to stop. Yeah, that's you know, obvious enough. Uh, to transfer, uh, the transfer of ownership of a resource is incentivized using a currency. So it can be tokens, a digital currency uh, used for traffic. And of course, we need to have a buyer that wants to buy the right away. Um, the urgency is a parameter that needs to be set for each actor. So if the urgency is bigger than zero, then it, it means that I'm willing to pay some tokens to, to own the right away. And then the trading might take place if we have a buyer, so someone with a higher urgency, and an owner, someone that owns the right away and is willing to sell it. Okay, so the negotiation scenarios that might happen in this topology, the basic ones are three. So it has to be clear that then we might have at, at most one conflict intersection resources between any two vehicles. So between two pairs, we have one conflict zone that could be negotiated. 
And these are the three basic uh, scenarios. So in this case, we have car, the West car and the South car conflicted for zone C. In this case, it's West car and this car conflicting for zone B, right? Because they want to go down. And then car South and car, and car East conflicting for uh, zone A. All right, so the negotiation mechanism, uh, it's quite simple. So this is the algorithm that we used uh, in a flowchart. So for each vehicle, uh, we have an urgency level that has been uh, set. And based on that value, we, uh, that actor can make an initial offers of N tokens, again, based on the urgency level. So that offer is given to the owner of the uh, intersection or, or the conflict zone. If the offer is accepted, then we update the wallets, right, which contains the amount of tokens every actor has available and the priority. And then, of course, uh, that you know, the new owner of the resource will proceed through the intersection. Otherwise, if it's not accepted, but it's declined, we increase the offer by one token until either it's accepted or we have, uh, exceed a, a threshold for the offer. And then, of course, the priority remains the same. Uh, this is exactly the same examples that I showed earlier with the difference that in this case we have uh, the negotiation happening. So as you can see here, so even though even though car four arrived at the intersection earlier, it exits in the intersection later because there has been a, you know, a negotiation sort of transfer right away between car four and car two. And the same thing happens here in the last plot for zone C between car four and car three. Okay, so here is our simulator and I can show you some negotiation here that is happening. So here there are several cars entering the intersection. Yeah, so the priority has been given. Okay, so now this car here south clearly wants to go to the right and that's depicted by this little block here. And the red car wants to go straight. So this car is already here. It's, uh, so the time of arrival of this car, it's definitely much lower than this. So there is no negotiation happening between these two. There is no need. So this car will, will make it in time. So this car has a higher urgency than this other car. And that's where the negotiation will take place. So it will take place between these two cars, right? Because they both conflict for this area, for this zone. So the negotiation happens and it seems like eventually uh, the red car will give four tokens to the to the white car and then another negotiation will happen to the car that was next to the white car. Uh, I hope yeah it's not too fast but uh, eventually the red car makes it to the uh, through the intersection uh, fast enough. So I can show this without pausing and you will see that it's definitely much smoother and, and there is sometimes not even need to stop. They will just go to the intersection quickly enough unless they uh, are giving away the right away. Okay, uh, so for um, implementing the uh, this negotiation mechanism, we use the state flow, which is a, a tool uh, that basically is designed to, uh, to build um, uh, state machines. And we eventually, um interacted it connected matlab with uh, unreal to have a photorealistic um, visualization and uh yeah that's pretty much it so these are a couple of papers that uh came out of this work and i would like to, to know uh, to let you know that we we also extended this work to use a, a learning approach where we got some preliminary results but there is still more work to do and we also applied uh, this same concept for a robotic example in an automated grocery store. But yeah. So yeah, so that's it. Thank you very much. And uh, if you have any questions, I'm more than happy to answer. Yeah, Correct, yes. And is there any way to extend that to allow maybe one selfish car or some selfish cars or here maybe emergency vehicles that okay we need the right of way? Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yes, yes. So it's not included in this specific work, but yes, it can be extended to include those kind of actors. So for example, 
uh, as you said, emergency vehicles can always have the IA urgency, right? And of course, without the need to exchange any tokens. So those kind of actors can be uh, yeah, included in this uh, workflow. Yeah, but what about, for example, if there is a selfish car or someone who's not willing to participate? Participate, or it's not you know doing it based on goodwill, but okay, I want to go as fast as possible. Can I go and participate? Is there a way to somehow incorporate this? Or I mean, you 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 always need to collaborate, so you have a maximum amount of tokens in your wallet, right? If you want to, if you don't care about the other ones, you want to go first in the intersection all the time. You need to have enough tokens. So that, does that answer your question? Because no, I'm just trying to think of a real-world application. Right? Uh -huh. Obviously, we cannot change all the infrastructure that okay, all of our cars have this capability to do this. There will be maybe some older cars or if someone doesn't want to. Oh, no, okay. How can we do this? Okay. Uh, it's, it's a good question. Yeah, yeah. So it's like a, a mixed world, right? So some cars might have this uh, capability, some other cars might not. Yeah, 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 that's a bit more difficult. So I think even if you have... And not a not an autonomous vehicle, so you still need to have a way to uh, interact with other cars. So at least that's what is required for this particular workflow. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Yeah, well, that's a great point. Yeah. Yes. Have you considered? Expanding those, inflating the concept zone so that you actually have to build it into coming into the actual concept zone. To have it increases the number of finance. Yeah. And the reason for asking this question is that as we go to more complex situations, we don't see this. Do you see an offer challenge coming in in terms of race conditions? How do you? And start, you can create loops within the trading back and forth tokens. So, how would you tackle? Yeah, 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 it's a great, great question. Yeah. Yet, again, this, this is not, not a comprehensive work that you know addresses all the uh, problems or issues that can be uh, in those situations, for example. But yeah, so there are cases like a loop, as you're mentioning, could be one of those, for example, is where one car will just try to speculate, right? So I will just stay there and get as much as many tokens as possible, right? So I think in that case, we need to extend the work to include more cars or, you know, like a, a bigger traffic than just these few cars in the small intersection, right? So for example, in the case I was mentioning, right? When one car was just trying to get as many tokens as possible, what we can do is considering how many cars there are beside behind that car right and what's their urgency level so based on that we perhaps can allow a, like a limits of number of negotiations right so yeah there are definitely many other things that should be included to to have a working system like in a real world application yeah thank yeah thank you so um, uh, Okay, I see. Right. So the idea, maybe I, I didn't mention that, but the idea is to use a, a, a main arbitrator, right? So it's not really an actual direct communication between cars. So it's, the idea is that all communicate through this uh, uh, main arbitrator and the, the algorithm will run, will run there. So you will still need to have the uh, you know, information about position of the car, velocity, and also urgency in that you know transmitted from from the cars to that negotiator and then the negotiator will do the rest so that's the main idea but yeah otherwise if we want to have something more uh, decentralized we might need to think about some uh, algorithm to reduce the number of, of 
yep, communications and requests in general. But yeah, thanks. Very good. Let's uh, give Robert to our hands again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. 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 Yeah.